Sorry I had to bring you up here on such short notice, Dr. Ordway, but uh, our uh, staff physician insisted on an outside opinion. Oh, that's quite all right. This fellow, Ellis, is obviously deranged. He's been in solitary. Should we uh, move him to the infirmary? Yes, I'll sign his commitment papers now. Oh, by the way, get him transferred to the asylum as soon as you can, will you? Yes? 9815, coming up for interview, Warden. Oh, thank you. Uh, cigarette? Oh, no, thanks, no. That's Carter. Oh. You signed his parole papers last week. I've been wanting to talk to you about him. Smarter, don't you approve? Well, he has the credits, uh, but uh, it's difficult to explain. His behavior's been good, works satisfactory, but... Well, he's never adjusted himself here. If he had, he probably wouldn't be any good for the outside. I'm not so sure he'd fit any place. He keeps to himself. He broods. I've got the idea he's been biding his time. Planning something when he gets out. Oh, if you feel so strongly about well, it. I can't stack a feeling and a few rumors off the grapevine against the parole board's judgment. Besides, you know the case pretty thoroughly. You testified at the trial, didn't you? Yes, yes. The DA thought that Carter might switch from not guilty to an insanity plea, but I examined him. I said he was sane, not a pyromaniac. What was his motive then? There was plenty of solid evidence, but, but no clear motive. If I remember correctly, he was a sales manager for a wired music company and... Well, he, he simply touched it off one night. Isn't that business some sort of a racket? Oh, no, no, that's strictly legitimate. Carter's company pipes music from a central location over phone wires. I don't think the jukebox syndicate likes them too much. They cut into their profits. Competition, eh? Yes. Mm. Oh, say, by the way, the prosecutor had the same idea that you have. He, uh, he tried to find a motive in a gang war angle, but he couldn't make anything out of it. Do you think there was anything in it? No, no, of course not. If I thought the arson had anything to do with organized crime, I wouldn't have signed the parole. No, my guess is that Carter's motive was personal. Yes, sir. Send Carter in. Yes, sir. Thing made out of pigskin? Yeah. I've always noticed that guys with classy suitcases get paroled easier than guys with duffel bags. Well, maybe the suitcase guys get more points for good behavior. I've done enough time for nothing. I never saw a fair bug yet who'd admit it. I was framed, I told you that. Okay, you were framed. Why, you. 9815. 9815. Carter, warden's office. Look, forget this. I want to get out of here today. Don't worry. I won't do anything that'll keep you here. Dr. Ordway. Hello, Carter. Stephen Carter, New York County, 1 to 10. Carter, I'm glad you're getting out. Well, thanks a lot for your help. <laughs> it's all right. You've done your time. Oh, doctor, I'd, uh, I'd like to talk with you. Uh, you better see me in town, 16 East 84th. Thanks, I will. Later today. All right. Sit down. You're leaving at noon. Yes, sir. Still claim you were not guilty? That's right. Nobody's ever done anything they're here for. Mad at anybody outside? How are you? Yes. We give a set of standard instructions when a man leaves here. Report to your parole office within 24 hours. Obey the rules to the letter. Remember you can serve the remainder of your term for even a technical violation. Understand? Yes, sir. You'll be back in a week if you go out of here with a chip on your shoulder. Now, don't do anything stupid. Is that all? Yes, that's all. Yes, Warden. Start processing, Carter. Right, sir.
Yes, we have that recording. Oh, I have it. Yes, we do. Oh, I don't Yes, we do. Yes, we have it. Mm -hmm. You can't hear it? Well, just a moment. Yes, we have that. Well, we have a vocal. We have Is that better now? All right. Thank you. Your number, please. I'd be glad to. Yes, Your number, please. Good morning, Miss Bellum. I'll see if we have that record. I'm sorry, we don't have it. Why don't you let my brother do that? Oh, Peter. No, I know. You don't have to tell me. Pete's never around when you want him to fix something. Where's Jane? In the office. Did you talk her out of going after Carter? No, of course you didn't. I asked you not to discuss it with her. Good morning, Mr. Bellum. Good morning, Mama. Good morning, Mr. Bellum. Good morning. So you're still going to drive up there and pick up Carter after all my advice? That's right. Look, I'm hiring him back because you asked me to. Isn't that enough? Do you have to show for him back here, too? I'm very grateful, but I don't think it's too much of a sacrifice for you. Isn't it? After he nearly put us out of business? He didn't, and you know it. You wouldn't put him back to work if you thought he had. It was only a favor to you. Oh, no. You're doing it because you feel guilty, because you didn't stand up for him in court. <sighs> Who could stand up against that kind of evidence? Besides, between that and my fire loss, I you had no... You didn't lose anything. I know how much you got from the insurance company. All right, all right. I still don't think you ought to degrade yourself by going up there. Sorry, we don't Your have number, it. please. Oh, Pete, forget it. You know how sore Mr. Anson and your brother will get if they find out. Your number, please. All right. Well, just a minute. Yes, I do. Thank you. Yes, we have it. Your number, please. Your number, please. Well, just a minute. I'll see if we have that record. Number, now listen good, Pete. This is positively the last performance, and I'm not kidding. Thank you, Roma. Thank you very much. In the house where I was born, there's a little brass French horn that I used to toot when I was just a boy. Toot 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 de toot. And I played it loud and clear, all the neighbors used to jeer, but my mother said it was just... She's playing my song. Yeah, I know. I heard it. Yesterday, and the day before yesterday, and the yesterday before that I heard it. But if this ain't the last time, I'm going to get the jukebox back in here. And to this day, our family name is Tain, because of my toot 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 toot. Although I'm a millionaire and I'm famous everywhere, I would trade it all to be back tootin' my little brass French horn in the house where I was born when I was just a boy. I'll see if we have that record. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, we don't have it. Can I give you something else? Thank you. Sure, we have that. Mm -hmm. Hello. Your number, please. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. Number, please. I'm oh, sorry, you don't. Yes. Thank you. Your number, please? Yes. Pete, this is Anson. That was your record you heard break. Now get back here as fast as you can. That was mean. What do you want me to do? Let him clown us out of business? You're sure full of the milk of human kindness, aren't you? I know my job. Suppose you start learning yours. That is, if you want to keep it. Your number, please? Yes, sir. Your number, please. Anson. Your number, please. Thank you. See what you can do with her. I'm losing my patience. Jane, I'd like to talk to you. I'm late already. I know. And I don't want you to go. Oh, I'm sorry. Jane, please. That hurts. I don't get it. Carter gives you the brush off, throws you over for a girl like Inez. And you'll still sit outside the prison waiting for him. Neither of us can help what we feel. All for love, eh, Jane? Yes. I know what you're doing. 
You're telling yourself that arson comes from, from something up here. That it isn't done for the more sordid reasons, like money or revenge. But you're all wrong. I'm not telling myself anything. Steve's no firebug. Well, that's quite possible. I felt for a long while that he wasn't guilty. Does that surprise you? Then who are you talking about? Oh, almost anybody. Pete, for instance. Oh, that's silly. He's harmless. I'm not so sure he's as simple-minded as he seems. Well, you're going to have to do better than that. All right. How about Goldie Harrigan, then? He's not so harmless. Possibly. But just because Goldie's a competitor, and he was once a gangster, that doesn't make him an arsonist. No. What about the boss himself? You know, arson for insurance is quite a classic. Oh, uh, I was just making a point. Uh, Obviously. Jane. Thanks. Where are you bound? New York. How are you going? Train. They give me a bus ticket. I get sick on buses. Stop. Jane. I didn't want you to come out to no one, Steve. Well, Jane, I. Well, this is very difficult for me. Won't be any more difficult driving. Hey, I thought you were going by train. How about a lift? Well, well uh, we thought we'd like to be alone, Mr. Uh... Blaine. Blaine need a dip, they call me. Dip's a pickpocket. I'm a mall buzzer. Stall a cannon doesn't make any difference. Work with nippers under a binny. Good binny men can always get by. What's he talking about? Well, a mall buzzer works on women's handbags. A stall distracts her while a cannon nips the straps and hides the bag in his binny. Binny's a coat with oversized pockets. Get it? Well, since you two want to be alone, I won't intrude. So long. Hey, uh, you want my train ticket? I got it. <laughs> but don't you see, Jane, I left you for Inez. You'll never forget that. I would if you'd let me. But there's your pride. You don't understand, do you? I'm around now when you need someone. You'll get used to me. After a while, you'll even depend on me. You think love is a habit? I'm counting on it. Oh, don't look so shocked. Every woman goes after a man. I just admit it. I don't know if it'll work. It's my nickel, Steve. You said you needed help. I do, but talking Phil Bellman to taking me back doesn't help me. If he's willing, I don't know why you shouldn't be. Bellum thinks I burned his plant. If he's willing to give me back my job now, there must be a catch to it. Steve, don't be so suspicious and bitter. It's all over and done with. You didn't lose three years out of your life. Well, if I had, I wouldn't risk my parole chasing shadows. Shadows don't set fires. All right, forget about working for him. But promise me. Don't go off by yourself looking for trouble. It won't be by myself. I'm going to ask Dr. Ordway to help me. But he testified against you. That wasn't against me. He told the court I was sane. Sent you to prison. They kept me out of an asylum. You can't prove yourself innocent of insanity, you know. Can you prove yourself innocent of arson? Well, I'm going to try. Got a dime, Inez? Why don't you try playing something new? No, I'll leave the new stuff to Bellum's outfit. We'll hit the crowd that likes to go back to the past. Speaking of the past, have you had any bulletins from up the river? Well, your friends are there. Why should I hear anything? I'm talking about Lover Boy, the one that liked to play with matches. What was his name, Carter? I haven't heard from Steve in three years, and you know it. You will. Well, I can't help it if he still goes for me. Don't be stupid. After your touching display of disloyalty, do you really think you'd be interested? Then what are you worried about? Not about your lily-white beauty, dear. Though I'm sure you'd like to think so. No. Well, what then? Carter will need work. When a guy's a plumber, he don't go looking for a milkman's route. He's through at Bellum, so he'll be around here for a job. 
Who are you kidding, Goldie? You're jealous and you know it. Here. I saved the dime you gave me last week. This is a little different from the psycho clinic up there. We try to get away from the doctor's office idea. Put the patient to disease. Go ahead. Go ahead, Carter, say it. <sighs> Not at ease. Is it what was on your mind in the warden's office? Oh, yes. You talked the board into paroling me, didn't you? Yes, I did. After three years of a ten-year sentence, isn't that a little unusual? Mm-hmm. Why? Let's say... You were my good deed for the day. Oh, let's say a little more than that, Doctor. I've heard that ordinarily you're a pretty tough customer. Couldn't be that you thought I was just a little bit innocent, could it? Could be, yes. After all the problems academic, you were sentenced. You served your time, now you're out. Let the devil take the hindmost. Steve, please. Oh, I'm sorry, Carter, but it isn't my job to question the courts. Well, I've heard differently. I've heard that lots of times you brought in the right man when the law was after the wrong one. In the course of my practice, yes, but I don't go around looking for lost causes. Suppose I were a patient. But you're not. Well, I ought to be. This is getting me down. Carter, you ought to look for a private detective, not a psychiatrist. Well, I have dreams. What will you all do? Well, do you have recurrent ones about killing a man named Anson or a man named Goldie Harrigan? Do you wake up dreaming you got a smoking gun in your hand because one of them fixed it so you take the fall for him? You'd have to convince me of those dreams. Well, I'd rather spend the time convincing you I was framed. Oh, I told you, that's a little out of my line. I'm sorry, Carter. Doctor, you don't understand. One of these men sent me up there. I, I can't think about anything else. The warden knows, he'll tell you. Dr. Aldray, please talk some sense into him. Can't you see that this is just leading you into trouble, Steve? Miss Darren's right. Where is it leading, Carter? Practically speaking. I'm going to see Anson. He's weak. If he's hiding anything, I think I can get it out of him. What about the other man? He's not weak. I'm going to try to get a job with him. Work from the inside. Through Inez? Why not? I won't let you. Would you please wait outside, Steve? I want to talk to Dr. Aldray alone. I know I'm imposing on you, but I can't help it. Please do something for him. This thing is distorting his mind. Men who dream about killing and talk about it rarely do anything about it. I hope you're right. I examined him three years ago and said he was sane. I still say so. Forgive me for rushing you off like this, Miss Darren, but I have other patients waiting. Well, thank you, Doctor. Goodbye. May I help you? I'd like to see Mr. Harrigan. I'm afraid he isn't in. When will he be in? I'm afraid I don't know. Well, do you expect him back today? I'm afraid I can't say. Do you think his secretary's brave enough to say? Oh, yes. Good. But she's out to lunch just now. There wouldn't be a Miss Inez Gray around here, would there? There would. Still working hard at it, aren't you? Uh-huh. But short hours and uh, more pay. It's all right, Louise. He just looks like he'd bite. I heard you were working for Goldie. Did you? Wasn't a pleasant thing to hear up there. Oh, come on, Steve. It was a great big wonderful world for a few months. That was three years ago. Yeah, this makes me a little sick to remember that it all happened to end the day I was sentenced. You mean I took advantage of you, used you? and threw you out like an old shoe. <laughs> this is a switch. Now, it's funny. I know there's nothing more to you than what appeals to a guy like Goldie, and yet I can't help myself. Do you mean that? Yes. Is that the only reason you're here? Yes. Prove it. I'll ring for you. Thank you. I know she's there. Just a moment. Oh, pardon me. I, I... I didn't know what was happening in here. You do now. I... Hmm. Only, hmm. 
you'd go to the ends of the earth for me. You're mad for me. Beyond reason. Beyond duty. Beyond honor. But you'd still like to see Goldie. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no more music tonight. We're closing. Have fun, Pete. Good night, Mary. Good night. In the house where I was born, there's a little brass French horn. In the house where I was born, there's a little brass French horn that I used to tune when I was just a boy. Toot, 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 toot. Answer. I had a hunch I'd find you here. Uh, I'm not doing anybody any harm. All I'm doing... All you're doing is causing disturbances in bars with that idiotic song of yours. Now, get out. Didn't I tell you to go? Well, my music... It'll still be here in a but morning. I... Get out! Yes. Who? Oh, yes, Miss Darren. What? Anson was murdered. Mr. Bellum just called me. The police phoned him to come right down to his office. Well, why did you call me then? After Steve told you how he felt about Anson this afternoon, I, I was afraid of what you'd think. I know it looks bad for Steve, but I wish you wouldn't say anything to the police. Oh, I'm sorry. If they ask me, I'll have to tell the truth. But don't you see, if they find out how much Steve hated Anson, he'll be in a terrible spot. Well, not if he hasn't done anything. Well, besides, you're jumping to conclusions. He may have been nowhere near Anson tonight. I only hope he can prove it. All right. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Yeah, this is Ordway. Your line's been busy. Who calls you at this hour of the morning? 3.35 a.m. 
Oh, Inspector Manning. Well, what keeps you up this late? Well, not insomnia, I assure you. Hold on a minute. Philip Bellum is here. Right away. That phone call wasn't from a man named Carter by any chance. <laughs> no, not by any chance. What do you know about him? He came to see you today. No, no spies. Just a word with the warden. He heard you and Carter talking in his office. All right. Stop being so pleased with yourself. What's he done? Oh, nothing much. He just knocked off a guy. Am I sure? Well, he didn't call first to ask me to watch, if that's what you mean. No, I don't have him yet, but I will. Suppose you get over here, meanwhile. I'll send a car for you. Oh, you uh, need help so soon, Inspector? No. I just have a little surprise for you, though. You know how I love to give surprises. All right. Fourth floor, in the front. Thanks. Uh, 38 caliber, copper point. What length barrel would you say it was? Uh, let's see. What's left of the grooves? I guess a belly gun. About a uh, two-inch barrel. Hello, Dr. Ordway. Back this way. In there. Thanks. Hello, Ordway. Good morning, Inspector. Three slugs. Heart, liver, and this one wild. Sales manager. What were you doing here this late? Came to meet Carter. Mm -hmm. Who's the man over there with the mittens? Pete Bellum, the boss's brother. He's the repair man here. We thought we'd do a paraffin on his hands for luck, just to find out if he fired a gun tonight. I told you, I never used a gun in my life. Then you shouldn't mind our trying to see if any gunpowder stuck to your hands. I thought you were so sure that Carter did it. I am. This is just to prove it. Tell Dr. Audley what happened here tonight. Well, I'm a songwriter, and I do my own arrangements, too. A lot of big people are pretty interested in my stuff. Maybe you'd like to hear something. Yes, I would. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, not now. Some other time. Go on about tonight. Well, Anson, I mean, Mr. Hanson, didn't like my song, so I record them after hours. He came in tonight just as I was leaving. Did he object to that? Oh, no. He was just mad because he had this date with Carter and I was in the way. Then he did get mad at you. Oh, no. <laughs> you just said he did. Not mad like this morning when he broke my record. Oh, you were mad at him, then. Oh, no. He was just a... I mean, he just didn't understand. Anson wasn't the musical type, you see. The point is, Pete saw Carter come up here. He didn't come down again, so Pete figured he and Anson went out the back way. He came upstairs to finish his recording and found Anson dead. That's right. You called the police. Sure. That's why I don't see what they want with me. If I shot him, would I call the police? <laughs> if you're smart, you would. I'm not smart. If you're a doctor, I should think you could see I'm not smart. You're sure it was Carter. You hadn't seen him in three years, you know. He worked here six. Mm -hmm. Let's hear what his brother has to say. I don't see what the inspector wants with Anson's bonding report. Just trying to get a make on him. What? Anson didn't have a record, and the inspector is checking his background. Mr. Bellum, this is Dr. Hardway. Oh, yes. You were the alienist at Carter's trial, I remember. Said he was sane. Yes, I did. So sure now? Well, I don't see any reason to change my mind. Just because your brother said he saw him come up here doesn't mean he shot Anson. You might as well suspect him. Oh, Pete's a little childish, but certainly not dangerous. A man doesn't have to be crazy to commit murder, you know. Fire insurance, burglary, car policy. That isn't it. No, well, it's interesting. There's a twenty thousand dollar policy on Anson's life. Are you the beneficiary? I am. Do you always insure your employees' lives? If they're valuable to me, Anson's death will cost us a lot of business. 
I insured Carter's life for the same reason when he was our sales manager. How is business, Mr. Bellum? Couldn't be better. You're not implying that I shot Anson for the insurance money. Have you any idea why Carter might have killed him? He took Carter's job and he tried to take his girl. Hank! Call radio. Get a report on the Jane Darren checkup. It's been 20 minutes already. By the way, where were you tonight about 2 or 2.30? Around the time Anson was killed. Home? Alone? Card game. Solitaire? Poker. Five witnesses. Hello, this is McDonald. Uh, give me radio. A uh, radio? This is Mac. What about the Jane Darren checkup? Yeah? Yeah? 713 West 92nd. Right. Carter's at the Darren Dean's place. Uh huh. Who's standing by? Prowl car. Come on, Audway. Let's see if this pigeon is as clean as you think he is. Three B. Okay, stand by. Right. Did you have to lead them here? No, I didn't. Besides, I told you, I can't obstruct the police, no matter how I feel personally. I suppose they know that Steve threatened Anson, too. Yes, they do now. May we come in? Where's Carter? Take a look. How long have you been here? He's been here since 10 o'clock. You didn't tell me that when you called. I didn't see any necessity for it. Steve's on parole. All I wanted from you was a break. You've been wonderful. Take it easy, Jane. That kind of a break won't do him any good anymore. We have a witness who says he saw you go up and see Anson just before he was shot. Is that right, Doctor? That's right. Thanks for trying, Jane. I didn't think it'd work. Want to make any kind of a statement? I wouldn't. At this point, aren't you supposed to be making funny noises like anything I say can be used against me? The only statement you're going to get out of me is either Anson wasn't there or he was already dead. I didn't see him. I went home. Jane called me and I came over here. I'm not interested in any statement now. I'm more curious about your hands. Why? Was he shot and strangled, Sergeant? Inspector. I'm duly impressed. What about my hands? Wait a minute. Wait, Steve, don't make any trouble. Go along with them. I'm sorry, Doc, but this is where I get off. I'm clean and you know it. All they want to do is give you the paraffin test. Every gun has a powder pattern of its own. When they find the murder weapon, they'll be able to tell if your hand fired it. Now, it's the best way to prove you haven't done anything. Unless you wore a glove. You stay here. Come on. Wait. Go downstairs. I'll try from here. Eddie, call the police. Why should I call? They're already here. Oh. Which way to the backyard? Through the alley. The alley gate ain't open. Did they ask if it was open? Hasn't done anything, eh? Well, what were you going to say? Never mind, it'll keep.
Well, from the markings of this bullet, I'd say it came from a belly gun with a two-inch barrel. This checks with that. Very thorough, very scientific. Police Academy can be uh, proud of you. He's just strapping your boy to the chair. Mm -hmm. Now all you have to do is find him. Well, what does he want with me? Come on, Audrey. Anyone can be wrong, you know. Or even you, huh? Look, if I heard in advance that a seven-foot giant named Jones was going to kill someone with an axe, would I look for a three-foot midget named Brown carrying a bow and arrow? Someone told you in advance? You heard the Darren girl last night, just the same as I did. Just what did Carter tell you about going to see Anson? Well, only that he thought Anson set the fire. And he was going to try to get at the truth. Oh, that's all, huh? Isn't that enough for you? What, do you think he would have told me if he actually planned to kill him? No, but I didn't say he planned it. Although he's clever enough to use you for an alibi that way, if he had, maybe he just suddenly blew his top and let him have it. Wait a minute, Manning. You think he'd hang on to that glove if he'd shot him? Why, that'd be stupid. He could have. You just said he was clever. You can't have it both ways. Are you suggesting that the glove was planted on him? Yes. I think you ought to check everyone he saw yesterday, starting with Goldie Harrigan. The jukebox operator? That's right. Carter told me he was going to see him. Are you looking for a gang war angle in this, the jukebox syndicate against the wired music people? The department went all over that at the time of the fire. No, I was thinking it was jealousy angle. Goldie's girl, Inez. She was Carter's girl for a while, too. What does your boy wear? Roller skates? Listen, Ordway, you're way over your head on this. Carter is a hard and deliberate killer. He held onto that glove because he was afraid it might be found and traced. He took a long chance making a break because he knew he'd be a dead pigeon in court. You made a mistake signing his parole. Why don't you admit it and forget it? As far as I'm concerned, the case is closed. And you aren't going to start checking, huh? No. All right, then I will. You do that. And don't let me know how it turns out. Mr. Harrigan, please. Who's calling? Dr. Ordway. Just a moment. I'll see if he's in. Yeah? There's a Dr. Ordway here to see you. Ordway? Stethoscope doctor or a phony? Should I ask him? No, sweetie. Just send him in. Mr. Harrigan. Oh, I know who you are now. You're the doctor who works for the cops. Oh, no. Worked. Oh? By the way, do you know uh, Inspector Manning? Sure. We used to play cops and robbers together. Well, the inspector and I disagree. Uh, he thinks that uh, Carter murdered Anson. I don't. No? No, I think it was made to look that way. The killer is someone else. You wouldn't be looking for him here, would you? Well, I'm looking in a number of places. Why does everybody come to me? The only killing they haven't tried to pin on me is cock robins. I'm supposed to be running rackets and everything from almost new cars to old seltzer bottles. When, as a matter of fact, I've never done any time in my life. The only place I've ever been booked is Dun & Bradstreet. What do you want from me? Well, to begin with, I'd like to know what you and Carter talked about yesterday. You know, Doc, how you've lasted all these years going around asking sudden questions like that, I'll never know. I'm very agile. You'll have to be to get the answer to that one out of me. I haven't seen Carter in four years. No, look, Harrigan. Maybe you don't murder or steal. Maybe you're not in the rackets, but don't tell me you don't lie when it's convenient. Louise, get in here. You think I'm lying, huh? Louise, you were here all day yesterday, weren't you? 9.30 to 5.30. Did you go out for lunch? Oh, I don't eat lunch. I'm on a strict diet. Was this man here yesterday? Oh, goodness, no. Thank you, Louise. You're entirely welcome, I'm sure. You satisfied? I guess I'll have to be. Always glad to answer questions, providing they don't come in here with a badge in front of them. Oh, uh, by the way, how's Miss Gray? You know Inez? Only by reputation. I hope that's not a crack. <laughs> no, that's just a matter of speaking. Uh, Carter mentioned it. Thanks again. Is 
Excuse me, but that was the right answer, wasn't it? What? Oh, that was the right thing to do, wasn't it? Say he wasn't here yesterday? And account of what I said in the papers about the police and all. What are you trying to tell me, sweetie? Carter was here yesterday? Well, didn't Miss Gray mention it? He wanted to see you. Did he see Miss Gray? Oh, yes. What do you mean by, oh, yes, in that tone of voice? Well, I didn't mean anything. That, oh, yes, sounded like, oh, boy. What did he want? I really don't know. Oh! What's been going on around here? He was very affectionate. Like an old friend. I guess he was an old friend. Oh, dear, a regular green-eyed monster. Leave the paper. I'll pay you tomorrow. This is a great time to be playing newsboy. Watch. Steve. How bad is it? I've lost a lot of blood. Look, I've been running from him all night. You gotta let me stay here and get some rest. Goldie, you'll love that. Goldie wouldn't talk. Because you're wounded? He wouldn't care if you were embalmed. He's just liable to put another bullet in you. Come on, let me take a good look at that. Yeah. What's that? Self-owned. Sorry. You can't stay here, Steve. Where do I go? What about Jane? Well, the cops will be watching her place. I couldn't put her on a spot like that. But you don't mind putting me on it? Well, you're different. If you ever get out of this in one piece, the smartest thing you can do is to run right back to that little dame. You know what she did for you? Yeah, I know. No, you don't. She saw us in the office yesterday, Louise told me. And after that, she covered for you last night the way the paper said she did. Sonny, you're better call that home. I, well, Jane and I don't love each other. Do we? we? Make beautiful bandages together. Look, Steve, I can't go through this again. With you, I never know what might happen next. Forget about me. It'd be better for both of us. I'll pay you tomorrow. Goldie left us here. You better hide that arm. I don't know what you really think, but I didn't kill Anson. I didn't ask, did I? No, he won't. I can handle him. A brave one you are, hitting a guy with a cop slug him. Give me the police. No, Goldie, you can't. Want a bet? No, you don't, sweetie. Not for him or anyone. I've watched you go through these things before, remember? You can't yell, cop, when you know it. Watch. Hello, this is Goldie Harrigan. I want to report... Goldie! I want to report... A stolen raincoat. Yeah. Yeah, I'm crazy. Forget it. Goldie, you're a gentleman. I wish I could say the same for you. Okay, it's on the waiter. What'd you decide to do about Goldie Harrigan, Inspector? I sent a man up to his office just on the outside chance Ordway was making sense. That was him. Goldie isn't there. Well, wherever he is, something queer goes on. This just came in. Harrigan's raincoat stolen. Did you find out where the gray girl lives? Yeah, 2580 Central Park West. You know, I was wondering if maybe we shouldn't have... Manning speaking. Yeah? Yeah? Outside the park, eh? Okay. A mounted cop just spotted Carter outside the park. He may still be someplace in the neighborhood. Yes, Inspector. Give radio a 32, zone 64. Concentrate on the park area. Yes, sir. 
raincoat. Could mean Carter spelled Goldie's way. Maybe that's what he wanted to report before he got his mind changed for him. Come on, let's go. Just a minute, I'll see if we have that record. I'm sorry, we don't have it. Can I give it something else? Thank you. Sure, we have that. Hello. Your number, please. Thank you. Thank you. What do you want? I didn't think they'd let you out so soon. Didn't you? It never occurred to you that I might be released as bait for Steve. I asked Manny to let you go, because what you did was completely natural and understandable. Then why are two men watching my house? Well, that's the inspector's doing, not mine. I'm sorry I ever asked you to help us. I'm sorry you feel that way. Would you please tell Mr. Vellum I'm here? Your number, please. Yes, we have that. Well, we have a vocal and we have an instrumental. Just do one. All right. Your number, please. I'd be glad. Yes, we do. Thank you. Yes, we have it. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Your number, please. Your number, please. Well, you can talk to Pete, of course, Dr. Ordway, but I, I don't see what you expect to get out of it. Well, it's just a question of exploring a number of theories. You know, you... You start with a good motive. You're insuring Anson's life, for example. Then you find out it doesn't work out practically. You were playing poker at the time. Oh, really, Ordway? Oh, no, I, I'm just using you as an example. Then, on the other hand, you sometimes find a suspect with plenty of practical opportunity and no sound motive. Like whom, for example? Your competitor, Harrigan. Oh, superficially, it might look as though he murdered Anson because, A, he was taking customers away from him. Or B, simply to frame Carter because he didn't trust Inez with Carter out of jail. But the facts are, A, Harrigan didn't lose any customers to Anson, and B, he's sane, and sane men don't commit murder because they might have reason to be jealous. Well, that's all very interesting, Dr. Ordway, but since the police are convinced that Carter killed Anson, I don't see what you want with Pete. He's a happy combination of opportunity and motive. Pete's subnormal mentally, and he's psychotic about his music. Anson broke his record. He obviously hated him for it. Pete is my brother. That's why I came to see you first. Murder would only put Pete in an institution. It can put Carter in a chair. Let it. No, not until I've explored the other possibilities. Well, we have a vocal and we have an instrumental. Jane, you? tell Pete to come in here, will you? In the house where I was born, there's a little brass French horn that I used to toot when I was... Mr. Bell wants to see you. Just a minute. Now. Oh, Jane, my record. Later. Hans. I had a hunch I'd find you here. Oh, I'm not doing anybody any harm. All I'm doing All is... Your... Pete, Dr. Ordway here wants to ask you a few questions. Well, I don't mind. Pete, uh, You don't have to answer them if you don't want to. Did Carter say anything to you when you passed him on the street last night? Well, uh... Didn't I tell you to go? But my music... It'll still be here in the morning. But... Now, get out. You didn't stop and talk to him at all? No. He didn't even see me. Tell me, do you ever wear gloves? Oh, I expected sensible questions. Well, that's sensible, Phil. I do when it's cold. Mm -hmm. Ever wear just one glove? Sure. When? Last night. When I was soldering, I always wear one glove when I solder. Can I ask you a question, Doctor? Of course. If you think I killed Anson, why don't you say so? Did you? No. So that's enough, Ordway. I don't want him to start brooding about this. You know why I'm not mad at you, Doctor? No. Because I think you've got a lot of judgment. I, I respect you. Maybe you can help me with my music. Oh, Pete, please, don't let's get started on that again. No, that's all right. I, I'd be happy to do anything I can. Well, c come on with me, then. I'll let you hear a sample. What's 
the matter with you? She tried to break my record. If I hear that song once more, I'll go out of my mind. You see why I didn't want him encouraged? I'll play my music whenever I want. I'll play it now. You won't if I have to break every piece of equipment in this place to stop you. What's got into you, Jane? He's your brother. Why don't you put him away someplace? Jane, uh, we're all so upset now. Perhaps I'd better take the record with me. No, that's just an excuse. I bet you don't even care about my song. Oh, you're wrong, Pete. I'm, I'm very interested. I'll play it the minute I get home. Will you take good care of it? Oh, I promise. All right, then. Are you going to let this busybody do whatever he wants? Really, Jane, I can't understand you. All right, Pete. I'll let you know what I think of it. He's a very nice man. And you handled him pretty well for a subnormal psychotic. Did I? Well, thank you, Phil. Pick him up? Sure. We get sent out after a killer and come back with a drunk. What do you think the captain will say? Darren. I'm sorry to bother you this late. I had to see you. Well, won't you come in? I wanted to apologize to you. There's no need for it. I had no right to talk to you the way I did. Oh, that's all right. You, you've been upset. Sit down, please. Look, Dr. Ordway, I know how much you've tried to help Steve and me. 
My behavior was inexcusable. Oh, forget it, please. But it isn't only that. It, it's Pete. What I said to him must have hurt him deeply. Oh, he'll get over it. He's like a child. Yes, I know, but still, I'd like to make it up to him somehow. In what way? Well, I thought you might be able to suggest something. Uh, like, uh... Showing an interest in his music, for instance? Well, that, that's a good idea. Have you played the record yet? No, I was just about to. You won't miss anything if you don't. Well, let's listen and see. Oh, don't bother. We've all taken enough of your time. Of course, no bother at all. Take just a minute to warm up. There. In the house where I was born, there's a little brass French horn. You see, that isn't very much. No, but it has a certain naive charm. Only the first time you hear it. In the house where I was born, there's a little brass French horn that I used to tune when I was just a boy. Do, 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 do. Anson. I have a hunch I'd find you here. Well, I'm not doing anybody any harm. All I'm doing... All you're doing is causing disturbances in bars with that idiotic song of yours. Now, get out. Didn't I tell you to go? But my music... It'll still be here in the morning. But... Get out. Well, I guess that's all. Maybe there's more. Let's wait. Let's not. Let's you and I quit playing games. You made up your mind to hear what was on there the minute I stopped Pete from playing it. Why did you stop him? Because I played it. Because what's on there will mean the end of Steve. I don't care if he killed Anson. I love him. I'm sure you do. Who's that? Oh, it's you. What are you doing here? Jane, what do you want? I had to see you before Steve gets here. You changed your mind? No. Then I'll tell him you never could stand the idea of he and Inez together. And I'll tell him that's why you burned this place and made sure he took the blame for it. I don't think you will. Don't try that, Miss Darren. Throw your gun over here. Throw it over here unless you want him shot. That was a lovely little picture yesterday in Goldie's office. You and I, Nez. Is that why you planted the glove on me? Uh, it goes back farther than that. Yes. It started with her setting a fire for the same reason. Stay there. Steve! Don't think I won't because I stopped Manning. Open up! Open up, Ordway. We know Carter's in there. Tell Cook to bring the others in. Get them in here, Cook. I'm sure you'll find the bullets they took from Anson's body were fired from her gun. She framed them, huh? I'm sorry, Carter. Call the coroner. Steve. And you let me sweat you for three hours trying to cover for him. You gotta lose some time, Manning. I guess I never had a chance, even from the start. I'm sorry, Goldie. Sure, I know. Forget it. That's very touching. But can someone unwind this so it'll make sense in my report? Yes, Pete Bellum can. You think he'll sing? I'm afraid nothing can stop him. In the house where I was born, there's a little brass French horn. Yeah. 